Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the next episode in the series. Appreciate you continuing to watch um, as we progress through this application. And it's been a few days for me, so I just want to get caught up here. Um, seems like we've basically uh, created our little list to detail view, um, sharing some information between the screens, and uh, we have our back navigation working as intended. Uh, all this done with Jetpack's navigation components library, uh, taking in our nav args to use our safe args plugin, and uh, a whole lot of, um, you know, just very popular, very good um, tools and programming practices. So if you missed any of it, uh, definitely go ahead and get caught up. And for everyone uh, up to speed, thank you again for tuning in. So I figured um, we would take a look at our traction model here. We actually have a little location um, object as part of our model. So I figured we could probably make use of that in this um, detail fragment. Maybe we'll throw like a little icon up here. So just gone ahead and fetched a little icon. Uh, going to add a menu, which we don't even have here. So we're going to add a new resource directory for a menu. And then we'll say new, uh, let's go with menu traction detail. Going to add our item in here. Um, we'll give it the ID of menu item location title location icon location uh yeah we'll do white. created our little menu here that we're going to inflate in our detail fragment. In order to do that, we need to uh, call this function set has options menu to be true. Um, and then that will have us uh, override the on options on the, the on create and the on options item selected. And so here we're going to uh, inflate our menu that we just created into this menu and then we do a simple when statement here for the item ID when it is the menu item location we're gonna do something else we're just gonna return super um, so we're going to return true to let the system know that we are taking over this option item being selected and then uh, it's a matter of doing something. So we have the data already. We kind of just need to launch the activity uh, that we're trying to target here. So um, uh, Android Maps intent. Yes, yeah, so it's pretty good. I will drop this documentation in the description because there is a whole lot that you can form or format here um, in order to create the appropriate intent to launch the Google Maps uh, application from your own. Um, but as you can see here, this is basically the gist of what we're going to be doing. Um, we're going to be using our location, our lat long, setting an action view on our intent, and then specifying exactly what package we want. So I guess it's important to note that if you, 
Come on. It's important to note that you need, you're going to need to have the Google Maps application on your phone, um, especially if you're going to go ahead and specify exactly what package you want uh, this intent to be handled by. So, um, you know, just keep that in mind, but hopefully your emulator has one, or if you have a real device, it'll definitely have one. Um, so, yeah. So let's just copy this right now, and then we will um, modify it for ourselves. Let's go ahead and import a few things here. Okay, uh, things are slowing down a little bit, so hopefully this doesn't become too much of a problem, but we'll see. So like I said, we have our information here, so we can just fetch it from our attraction, our location, and then the latitude, and then comma, attraction, location, let's do it. All right, action view. I don't know why we're calling it this. Let's just call it intent. No, it's not the intent action. So URI, our map intent, we set our package, and then we go ahead and launch it. Okay, so let's go ahead and see where this gets us. All right, uh, this is painfully slow right now. I might have to restart my computer, so we're just gonna see if this will work. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead and click on Solly here, our first one. Our attraction details, you can see that it actually has a an icon here, but it's not tinted exactly how we want it, but that's uh, that's okay. We can just clean up that design a little bit. But then when we actually click it, you can see that uh, we get this callback, we create this intent, we start the activity, and it should uh, have moved us to the latitude and longitude coordinates here that we have set up for our uh, specific attraction. Yeah, this is moving a lot slower than I would like. Uh, however, I think it's fair to say that we've opened uh, the map. Sheesh. Okay, I uh, had to restart my computer there. It's moving just a little too slow. Um, and we'll see if it can if it can keep up this time around. Um, just gonna go ahead and like kind of sift through here to look for a couple other things that maybe are uh, worth it for us to put in. Um, just because you can kind of create this, you know, URI appropriately, and your uh, or the Google Maps app knows how to handle it. So. Um, We're just going to go ahead and put some other things in that hopefully makes sense. Uh, title. All right, let's see how that looks. Um, so we have our geolocation here, and then we format the URL to also have a zoom of uh, nine. I put. I think the range is. I think the range is 0 to 21, and that has to do, you know, that, that I think 0 is like they said all the way out to see the whole world. Yeah, here we go. So, except the values range from 0 the whole world to 21 individual buildings. Um, so, kind of just playing around 9, see how that looks, and then Q uh, our title here. Um, just to kind of add in a little bit more of the query param information. Okay, uh, we got our app running again. So if we click on our attraction, yep. So we can, uh, it's tinted properly. And we actually didn't need to do that programmatically. So I'm gonna go ahead and just remove that. Uh, and instead of actually using the Android namespace, we use the app namespace for the icon tint attribute and then everything works. It seems like it doesn't show up here in the preview. Uh, however, it does appear here where it actually matters in the app. So that's good news. And then if we go ahead and just click on our little uh, menu item here, again, just gonna launch ourselves out to the 
um, Google Maps application and then you know with all of this information about lat long our zoom level our little query here and um, I apologize this is taking a painfully long time for for this uh, to run so I'm gonna have to take a look at that but as you can see here uh, we have our title coming up in the little uh, search bar and that's coming from our query attraction title field in the URL or the URI and then if this thing ever loads it should uh, be centered or you know looking at this particular location these lat long coordinates at our set zoom level uh, in the meantime here you know there's just a plenty of stuff that you can kind of go ahead and put um, into this URI that the app knows how to handle. You can search for just like basically uh, categories and stuff like that. Um, and and it's pretty useful because Maps is usually, well, Maps is extremely important or uh, uh, helpful, right, in, is the word I'm looking for. So, you know, if, you're app, if your application for whatever reason has any bit of location involved or, or directions giving or anything along those lines, um, you know, this will uh, obviously be just a pretty simple way to provide that little extra accessibility to the user. Um, and it, also doing it this way, you don't have to worry about the fact that, you know, you have to go get a Google Maps API key and you know set things up with like a debug version and a production version so actually integrating the map itself into your app is a bit more hands-on there's a lot more stuff you need to go ahead and do and configure uh, but being able to kick them out to the maps application set to a particular spot um, that's obviously a lot easier and and much more accessible i guess um, so just keep that in mind if that's something that you're interested in. So you can see here, I'm not even going to touch it because it's just painful. Um, but we have Sali as our destination or, or as our little search query. You can see that Google kind of fills it with whatever it can find based upon the information that we've given it. And then here it actually even outlines it uh, in red. And that is, I guess, technically the entire region of uh, Sali. If I can zoom out yeah so and by doing that I'm holding command and then clicking and dragging on Mac on an emulator um, just kind of wanted to show you a little bit more of where it is what? And apparently it thinks I clicked over there so this is just painful at this point but um, Try it out for yourself if uh, if you're interested. Do it on a real device or, or a computer that's not struggling, and uh, it, it'll look a whole lot better. But um, point being, we have our little maps integration to some extent uh, in our app, and we're able to uh, you know easily kick the user out, consume uh, the option click, uh, you know any interaction they do with the menu item and then also just a little refresher on how to actually notify that your fragment cares to um, update the the menu that exists in that action bar at the top there. So uh, apologize for the choppiness here in the video and just how fragile that emulator seems to be running but um, appreciate you sticking with me hopefully it is a reasonably exciting um, piece of knowledge to have and like I said I'll drop the documentation in the description so that you can review it further because there's a lot more that you can do uh, you know with just basically this one little string that you format appropriately so um, you can go ahead and just commit this here uh, because I remembered before the video ended so we added our location icon and menu to the app and updated what happened in Gradle? Okay, it's a config file. Um, updated our attraction detail fragment to Yep, uh, that might be the last time I do that. <laughs> it's not really all that uh, exciting, but uh, or maybe I'll skip over it. 
but just wanted to, you know, get you guys in the habit or at least myself in the habit and, and just show you that, uh, you know, it's a pretty good idea to commit early and often and um, just uh, keep the project up to date outside of your computer in case anything happens. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to cut it here and I will catch you in the next